And like I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I've never felt like this before. So I'm like feeling weird. I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror high. And, and I had all this weed in front of me. And then I'm like, I don't want this. Because the Holy Ghost started dealing with me. He said, I'm going to take that. I'll take care of it. And I look around like, and I like shook it off. And they're like, nah, I rolled the blunt, so I know they ain't putting nothing in it. So I know I'm not hallucinating nothing. It's just like, what is happening? Then I heard it again. Don't take that, I'll take care of it. Wow. I was like, look, I don't want this stuff. Here, take it, take it back. I gave all the stuff back. I gotta get out of here. Here, get the stuff, let's go. And he was just, well, what's, the, what's the matter? I, like, I gotta get out of here. I don't know what's the matter. <laughs> I just gotta go. I can't be here. I can't take the weed. I can't be high. Something is wrong. Well, and I just gotta go. So I finally made it to church the next day. I knew a testimony service. I stood up and told all my business. Yeah, I said no, but blah, blah, blah. I didn't know. I'm just, I'm glad no police was there. But I would start telling everything. And I told them about the prayer I said. And I said, I want to be saved. They said, you already saved. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. So I'm, okay, that's what I'm saying here. So I went home and I had jewelry and all this stuff and music and movies. And I got a garbage bag. And threw it all in gold, everything. Threw it all in the garbage bag. And why he was like, What are you doing? You throwing away the gold too? All of it. Everything going. Everything to that light is gone. As of right now, tell it, get the word out. I'm doing it. Just like that. And backed it up, threw it in the trash in the projects. And I was like, And I've been serving the Lord ever since. Hallelujah. <laughs> the I must say. Because about what I'm going to get into, the year after that, I began to pray, and just praying and seeking the Lord, what you want me to do? I have to ask this question. Lord, what is your will? And now I'm going to get into the message here somewhat. And all of a sudden, now I didn't know about spiritual gifts and words of knowledge and visions. I didn't understand all that. So the Holy Spirit began to show me some things about the city. And I'm just like, what is, what's going on? Some things going on with the church. So witchcraft stuff, all this stuff, I didn't know what it was. I could see it, but I didn't know how to articulate it, what to call it. I didn't know anything. So I started going to people in the church body. And, you know, some people like, okay, Brother Riley, just, you know, yeah, we'll pray. <laughs> okay, I just, like, maybe I'm off, but I just want to know. <laughs> I don't know I'm seeing this stuff. But I was just praying, it, and, and, and uh, uh, Lord, there's some people in my life that show me the scripture about, the gifts of the spirit and words of knowledge and then start putting names to things that was happening to me because it would scare me because I'd be around people at work and, and then they would I'd feel sadness but I knew it wasn't me I was like I'm not sad I, you know what I mean I'm in the Lord and then I just walk up to the person like you okay like they're like no I'm going through and I'm just like why am I feeling this stuff <laughs> why am I feeling sadness that ain't mine or I'm feeling things you know discerning I was discerning things and then I keep saying this to him, and it just, like, I'll just say it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I would just, it's like the Lord just put me in the crash course right. through spiritual gifts before I even knew what they was called. I just would obey it. Yeah. And so when all this stuff was happening, he's telling me about the city, and he introducing me to people. And then he proceeded to tell me that how Elkar has a serious stronghold over it yeah. that hasn't been addressed. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, I don't even know what a stronghold is. <laughs> at all, <laughs> or gates, and there's all these gates in the corner that I learned over the years, and it's like, yeah, it's never been addressed, which leads us up to now, because the Lord is starting to put the body of Christ in here, in this area, in position to deal with it. All right, amen. But there's some issues that's in the way. Right. So, with that being said, let's go to First Timothy, the fourth chapter, mm -hmm. the first verse. Okay. Cause see. It's an evaluation coming to the church. All right. Anybody had an evaluation at your job? Mm -hmm. I just have one. And they, you know, they'll show you what you didn't, what you do well, what you don't do well. I'm not really good at paperwork <laughs> and data entry. I can do it. I'm just not real good at it. So she let me know that in the evaluation. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, you're right. I you know, ain't mad because it's true. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't even need to read it. But Going through that, the Lord is saying that he's going to do an audit or evaluation. That happened by eight, probably about 2008, 2000, around that time, 2008, 2010. Well, Lord will have to give you an accountant. It's like, okay, what are you doing with the 
the Holy Ghost and everything I've given you equipped you with it. What, what are you doing? Like, are, is everything working out okay? What are you good at? What are you not doing? Are you, you know, obeying or not? It just, it's a value question come. Now, we're supposed to be judging ourselves normally. You know, before you want to just sit back and examine yourself. And I'm going to get into it in a second. If anybody, everybody there was look at the first Timothy first verse, fourth chapter, excuse me, first verse, it says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, what's going on there? Lord, start teaching me about seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Because one of the biggest things, especially with doctrines of devils, people really kind of overlook that or overlook that part of the verse. Because like, well, it ain't like I go to the church of Satan or something. Like, where do you get doctrines of devils at? Sometimes it happens in church. And this was, there was kind of the context of this. But <laughs> I've been trying to get away from it sometimes. You know, I talk about this all the time. One of the places where doctrines of devils come in at is for what my old pastor say, the one-eyed demon. <laughs> the one-eyed demon. Doctrines of devils. Doctrine just means teaching or instructions. And seducing spirits. Seducing spirits is something else. And the reason why seducing spirits and doctrine and devils work, especially on the saints we're just talking about, is because we got unresolved issues Amen. that we don't want to talk about. Come on. And I was like, Lord, help us. Because that's why the art is coming to deal with the unresolved issues. And if you like me, there's times where I fought it tooth and nail. Because there's some stuff I didn't want to look at. Pain I didn't want to look at. There was times where I was on the floor praying and literally I still to this day don't know how my wife didn't hear me. But I was on the ground crying like somebody stabbed me. Like from the pain that the Lord was delivering me from. The emotional pain on the floor. Balled up in a fetal position because of certain trauma that I've been through. And the Lord was trying to get access to it because I kept it covered up. Like, we call it dissociation. One of the things I do, I teach class, social abuse class, anger management class, all those type of things, cognitive restructuring classes. That's just fancy terms for changing the way you think class. And I do a lot of that. And I've seen guys, when you walk up right in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, I've seen guys collapse in the middle of class because the Holy Ghost would deal right with the issue, not the behavior, but what's behind the behavior. And the men would just collapse and just weep and cry out to God. Right in the middle of the jail, in front of all the men and everybody. Because the Lord dealt with it. And we had to get to a place where he can help us with this. But just to give you some example of what's happening or how seducing spirits work. And why it's happening the way it's happening. In the book of Genesis, you will find in the second chapter. Um, you can go there if you like to. But at the end it said how when man was created, Adam and Eve, they was in the garden. And they said they was naked and not ashamed. Now, I heard that explained in many different ways. Well, with the glory of God on them. And that's why they didn't know uh, they got the spiritual clothes on. Some of just all kinds of stuff. Like, no, the text said they were naked and not ashamed the body. There was no glory on them or nothing. And see, that's why we don't know how to handle shame that because we can't even just say what it said. Right, how about that? We shame. Yeah, well, it was something. It had to be something. No, it was you don't even want to get that now. I don't want to go there. But that's what happens. And when I read the scripture, you know, we can't read it like the Sunday newspaper. It's designed to be studied, actually. Yes. So I'm wondering, and I'm always asking questions. I'm like a little kid. I drive preachers and stuff and pastors and them sometimes crazy because I'm always asking questions. Like I'm three. Yes. And always, like, Wait a minute, what about this? And don't you? No, I don't know. What about it? I don't understand that. And that's one of the things I asked Lord, like, well, why wasn't they ashamed? Or why did you put that in there? You made, you made a point to put that they wasn't ashamed yeah. in there. They just went in there to fill up space. But you find out in the third chapter, when they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and they see it, then their eyes is open, and they realize they were naked, and then they covered themselves. And then when God was coming, like he do, hey, how are you doing? Like, why y'all hiding? What's going on? How we were naked. Who told you that? Did anybody say that? I said that to my children. When they say something I didn't teach them, where'd you learn that from? Where'd you get that? <laughs> Dude, you didn't learn that from me. Where'd you get that? I made you this way. Why are you ashamed of it? See, when we get ashamed, two things happen. One, you cover the shame because that's still doing the big league, and then you run from God. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll do that with our same sanctified self. 
We think, well, just let us do that. No, we do that. Scared. Yeah, right. And the Lord looking. Like, what is you running for? I know anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, he ain't asking because he don't know what's going on. He just wanted them to come clean. Yes, and that is hard for us. Mm -hmm. And I'll raise my hand. Don't worry, you ain't got to raise your hand. I, I'll do it. Right. I'll, raise my, I'll call myself out a lot. I didn't preach messages and answer my own. Went to the altar. I thought I got to come preach it. Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, I have. But that's what's happening, the shame of it. So people are seeing we weren't always saved. Come on now. And some of that stuff we did is sin, because the ways of a transgression is hard. So we went through stuff, we seen stuff. And all this stuff was going on. And the brain is so amazing how God designed the brain. Everything your brain or you experience in life, your brain stores it. All of it. Whether you realize it or not. Whether you can bring it up consciously, it's all in your brain. And it's something that's called triggers. They call it mental health. So you be doing something, you ever smell something, then you remember something in your childhood or whatever. What has happened is access and stuff in your subconscious and bring it up to your conscious mind. And that's what happened. And so that's what happened in our walk with God. We'd be, you know, just doing, going about life, and then your spouse will say something sideways and trigger something. And you mad at your spouse, but it's really with trigger in you, something else. Come on. <laughs> what? I don't know, I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna play with that for. <laughs> yeah, why not? Cause one of the things we look at, and you see, as the whole thing I'm talking about with the spouses or relationship, and the Lord, I was just praying this week, and I like, Lord shooting for me to go there for some of this. Like one of the things we do to cover up ourselves and what we find it in the church and what the Lord wants to bring out today, some of it in passing, is relationships. Whether it's friendships, whether it's marriages and all this, because there's statistics is out and people saying that the church is getting divorced at the same rate the world is getting divorced. Why is that the case? To me, it's a no-brainer. Because we got the same information. That's it. We think like the world thing. Like, you know, you need to pray on that one. To me, you know. <laughs> you see the same fruit, the same seeds. Same thing. And that's what's happening because people would, and we have to really work on this because people get in relationships for the wrong reasons. I'm in a relationship where you can make me happy. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Not at all. Like having somebody else responsible for your happiness is not going to work. Well, I want cute kids. I've heard that one. <laughs> yeah. All kind of things, just stuff that comes with all this shame or abandonment, rejection, all this stuff that's going on. It's like if I give with this person, this will help. You know, they make me feel okay, or they give me the fuzzies, that's what I like to call it, and they kind of cute, and they give me the fuzzies, and I'm so in love, and not really understanding what's happening to your brain chemically. Everybody heard them songs, all we all heard about the love song, they're talking about you like an addiction or something, you know, this all that romance stuff. That's literally, like love, I mean, in the brain, when you get high, there's dopamine released in the brain, and all this stuff happened in the brain. So when you in love, the same thing happened to the brain. It lasts about a year, maybe just over a year. And then humanity shows up. The stuff you thought was cute at first ain't cute no more. Because the dopamine that went down to normal. You ain't high no more. Off love. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. You're not high no more. So now you can, I can't stand you and this and that and then, you know, instead of going to God, because we got married for the wrong reason in the first place, you know, it's just asking the Lord, just help me and just going before God about stuff, we just get a divorce, just like the world do. Yeah. 